Do you want to hear something incredible? The Khatam Sofer, in his true vote, he writes a story that was brought in front of his court. This was a Shochet. He was the Shochet in town, the only Shochet in town, and he thought to have a very funny sense of humor. He was known to be a practical joker. And his wife gave birth to a baby girl. He had a very close friend who lived a few towns away, who was a mohel, l'shem shamayim, the type of mohel that just to do the zikhut of a milah, he would travel days if not weeks. And this shochet, thinking it would be funny, thinking it would be a practical joke, he calls or sends a telegram to his friend the mohel, Mabruk, I had a baby boy. You're going to come to do the milah? The milah is going to be next week, Wednesday. The man sends back a telegram. Perfect, just in time. It takes me five days to travel to you. I'm going to travel. I'll be there on time, just in time, Wednesday morning for the Brit milah. And sure enough, this shochet was laughing hysterically. Wait till everyone sees the look on this guy's face when he walks into Shul. So he calls all his friends together. He says, listen, I got a friend of mine. He's traveling for five days. He thinks I'm making a milah Wednesday morning. He doesn't know I had a baby girl. He's coming. L'shem shamayim. And he's going to come into town. You got to play this out with me. It's going to be hilarious. Right, the Khatam Sofer. He says, when the guy walks into Shul, I want everybody to crowd around the bima. I'm going to have the chair of Elioh Navi there set up. I'm going to have the baby sitting on my lap. And the mohel is going to come swooping into shul just on time. And oh, is it going to be life? And sure enough, that's what took place. That Wednesday morning, this poor guy traveling for five days, thinking L'shem Shamayim, he's going to sacrifice to do a mitzvah. And he comes into town after five day travel comes into shul. And there the guy, the father, the shochet, he's shaking back and forth in the chair, Elyan Avi. He's holding the baby, all wrapped up. And all the guys, oh, the mohel is here, Baruch Haba. And they start singing songs. All the PU team. And everyone's trying to hold their smiles. And the mohel didn't catch on. He thought everyone was happy because it's a joyous event. By Brit Milah, people are happy. So he walks right up to the front. And the shochet, the father with a smile, hands the baby to the mohel and says, Bechavo, do the Milah for me. And the shochet, with a big grin, he leans back and he winks to his friends. Here's the moment of truth. And the mohel quickly unwraps the baby. And when the mohel finishes unwrapping the baby, he jumps. And everyone was laughing when he realized there was a little girl. Oh, what a joke that was. Oh, they were able to hear the laughing throughout the entire city. This man was so broken. He went and complained to the Khatam Sofer, the Rosh Hadayanim of the cities of that area. Do you know what the Khatam Sofer did? Khatam Sofer came into town, came to the house of the Shochet, the practical joker, explained to him that he was over on Isur de Oraita Bemezid. And he is now removed from his job and his position as Shochet of the town. Khatam Sofer. Put him in Kherim. Lost his job. Over a practical joke, which the Shochet quickly screamed, Rabbi, where's your sense of humor? To you is very funny. But Hazit, this poor guy, traveled five days to be broken down to pieces, carrying such hurt. He removed him from his job. No longer the Shochet in town. The Shochet had to travel five days of travel back to the city where the Mohel came from to get on his hands and knees and beg for Mehila 
And only then with a written mehila on paper with signatures and witnesses did the Khatam Sofer give the man his shochet business back. Took him out of khair. But up until that point, you're out of Am Yisrael. Because you broke the heart of another Jew. Evil speech. It's not just about Lashon Hara. It also involves Ona'at Divarim. Painful, painful words. We need to learn how to speak to people. And then we'll never come to speak against people. If we could only work at protecting from Ona'at Divarim, we'll never come to Lashon Hara. Because then the words that are going to flow from our mouth is always going to be positive. It's always going to be praises. It's always going to be beautiful compliments to all other people. Such a positive, upbeat person, negativity is just not part of his makeup. Lashon Hara is not part of his reality. That's what we need these days.